Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Showcase on Warframe. Now, time for weapon I really like, the Tonkor. A very hard to use grenade launcher. So the Tonkor. It's fairly strange because it's got the usual blast damage of a grenade launcher. And then it has puncture. You know in my head that doesn't really work. But anyway, it has both puncture and blast. And it has both very high critical chance, 35 to start off, and 2.5 times. And then 10% status, who cares about that, but the downside is you got two shots. And the reload's two seconds. So, there's a lot of reloading to do when you're using this, clearly. But however, that's not the only con. There's other cons, but still is very powerful. Where to get this weapon? Well, you go to your primary weapons in the blueprint section, or you buy the plat if you want. And for the blueprint, it isn't overly expensive. You need 60,000 credits. <coughs> Not expensive. Uh, 1,500 uh, salvage, 200 oxygen, which is a bit hefty, and then 800 chronic, which is nothing. And then two annoying argon crystals, because you know, whenever you're looking for them, you can never find them. Every time. Thanks, Orange Jesus. <laughs> Uh, but yes, now on to the performance. Now, the catch of this weapon is, well, it fires an arc, of course. But however, they have an aiming guide for you. Mmm, aiming guide. Yeah, you can see here, it drops very, very quickly. There's like no velocity. And even though it was delayed, you'd see that it does no damage in point blank. In fact, when you shoot it at your feet, you bounce. Although a bit delayed. So yes, you don't have to worry about blowing yourself up with this weapon, at least if you're not in critical health. So yes, there's no velocity, so your aiming arc really has to be there. Your timing has to be there. If you're aiming at point blank, there's also more problems. It is not, your reticule is not exactly true. The aiming area is specifically a little bit off to the right. So you must fire offset off to the left of your pretty much reticule. I'll slow down the footage for you to see in a second, but yes, using the weapon at long range also isn't a good idea because you probably won't get your target. Now you've seen there that, again, I have to fire off to this left. Fire off to the right, you see it misses. Off to the left, it hits. Again, you can see it's off to the left ever so slightly. It's something I'm very used to using it. But anyone else just starting to use it probably will miss a lot of shots, because I know I did in the beginning. But still, it's incredibly powerful, and if used correctly, it can destroy your foes, utterly decimating them. And also, the ricocheting grenades can, in fact, you know, still kill your targets or other targets. They still bounce around. But yes, it can be a bit annoying, because if you do miss, it just becomes a hindrance to you like that. So here it is, my ultimate build. It's probably like a lot of other people's ultimate builds, except for one major difference. Anyway. We got Ceration for overall damage. We got Firestorm to add more blast damage, more range to that blast. Piercing Caliber for the puncture damage. Split Chamber for the overall damage, plus you get to an additional projectile, and let me tell you, that projectile always goes a little bit off-centered from where you shoot. Doesn't matter if you one-shot shoots, that left one's gonna go somewhere else. Don't know where. We got Vital Sense and Point Strike for the critical build, and Hammer Shot for more uh, critical damage and status chance. And then I have a primed fast hands that's nearly maxed out. So yes, that last mod could be a lot of things, but do not take a heat of blast, it's not a good idea. The one of the advantage of this thing is it bounces around and still hits a target. If it sits there, it's there's no way to blow up prematurely. Yes, it's, I'm gonna repeat again, this weapon has no premature way of detonating those grenades. They must explode on their own or make contact with an enemy. So yes. Now, it could take various other mods such as, you know, Want one argon scope, but trying to hit a person head with this weapon is a bit more challenging than one would give it think. I'd rather just have the default. It always is the critical. You get 87% chance. I can live with that. All right, now I settle that. Let's go on some tests. Let's go get some Grenier. Playing Grenier, Arid Lancers. We got about a ton of them. Yep. Level. Uh, let's jack it up to I don't know. 85? Yeah. Yeah, 85 will do. <laughs> this is a puncture weapon, it will affect these guys, though blast damage does not. You could change the elemental if you want, but you'd be sacrificing other things. 
but I kept a blast, since the puncture is already built in. As you see, it takes roughly two to three shots to kill them. Though if you hit him in the, hit him in the head, it is a lot better. Now, the big problem with fighting Grenier against these guys is Grenier are the most picky ones to fight because they, like they like to spread out. So it's not a very good weapon to fight them against them in general. Now, not to mention, level 85s hurt a lot. <laughs> but oh well. In terms of damage, it did alright. It does alright. The puncture damage doesn't really solve the problem, but at least makes it vi being viable to fight them. Now, since I died there, let's go on to the next test. <laughs> We're gonna fight against some MOAs here. There we are. We'll take... Eh, ten of them. Yeah. Same level too. Same level. This will go much quicker. In all a group, they all die relatively quickly. In two shots, that entire group is dead. Dead. Very quickly. One shot and I killed that guy. And two shots for that last one. So yeah, very, very powerful against the Molas. Now against some, uh, Chargers. I'm gonna take 20 of them, and at the same level. 85. Now, of course, when it comes to grenade launcher and explosive weapons, it doesn't... It, it does the best against infestation. Like, wow, two shots, and they're nearly all dead. I gotta wait for the rest of them to catch up now. <laughs> and two shots again, and they're all dead. Maybe those two guys weren't caught in the blast there, but that's fine. They're dead now. So yeah, pretty easy. Very effective against infestation. Let's move on to the pros and cons of the Tonkor. Well, the pros? Well, you've got a lot of damage being outputted from this weapon. It's also got a very powerful critical build. And, in terms of usability, you don't have to worry about blowing up yourself with it. Alright, those are the pros. For some cons, it has frequent reloading problems, based on its design. And, the aiming arc is difficult to work with. That's just a huge problem with it overall. I think that's the biggest problem. And that's about it. Those are kind of two major problems there. Now, going on to the score for the Tongor. Damage, I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. It's extremely powerful. Maybe you won't take on the Grenier with that puncture damage, but you can start taking on the Corpus to much higher levels. Probably up to 110. And same thing goes for the Infestation. Won't do much against Ancients, but hey. For accuracy though, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. This weapon has poor velocity, and the aiming ain't aiming angle isn't that great. Kyle works conjunction make it very difficult to use. Design-wise though, I'm gonna give it 8 out of 10, because this makes it all balanced. If it was like the Penta, this would be a very, very different story. <laughs> but the Penta's not nearly as powerful though. Ammo-wise, I'm gonna give it 6 out of 10. Even though you have 40 shots, you only use 2 of them at a time, you'll get ammo back fairly quickly. You aren't gonna run ammo that quickly with this, or often with this weapon. And Misk, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 as well. As powerful as it is, and awesome, it's still difficult to use. Which is its main negative feature about it. <laughs> but oh well. In total, I give the Tonkor 32 out of 50, which is exceptional. But it would be a lot better if it weren't all these small nitpicking things holding it back. But those are there possibly intentionally. But hey, that's what it is. As for judgment for the Tonkor, I believe, yes, it's worth the Formas and it's worth the Catalyst, because once you know how to use it and you enjoy it, it's just an awesome weapon to use. Blow up everything, and without worrying of blowing yourself up, that's pretty awesome. But anyway, that's been Showcase for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'd like to see you guys next time. Take care up there. Before you go, though, if you want to see a particular weapon here on Showcase, leave a comment down below, and I'll be next one I choose. I'd like to thank you again for watching.